filmed live with our studio audience of no one. This is the Anime Nation Podcast with your host, John, and the news from the week, beginning with word that Shinra Bond Show is finally getting a full-length anime adaptation. The Shinra Bond Show Chocolates from Bad Guy premiered, actually hit store shelves in Japan 10 years ago. So now, with the latest series of chocolates, the Shinra Bansho Chocolate Tenshi Enme no Show line coming out in July, the Nico Nico streaming video service is going to, in Japan, stream a feature-length Shinra Bansho anime episode. For those of you that are not familiar with Shinra Bansho, it's a Bandai candy and card franchise along the lines of something like the very, very popular um, Now, you know, see folks, I tend to forget these names <laughs> every time I need them when they're on the tip of my tongue. Because on the tip of my tongue is Lucky Man, but it's not Lucky Man. Um, and it's not Kirameki Man, because that's Taxinoko. Um, uh, I will remember it shortly, so I'll get back to you on that. But Shinra Blancho chocolates are chocolate wafers in a foil package that also includes a collectible trading card. So the trading cards, or trading stickers, are very, very popular in Japan, obviously, enough so that they've been making them consistently for 10 years. However, there's only been one Shinra Bansho anime, which was a 30-second TV spot, or I think it was actually a 90-second TV spot, released early this year, this past spring. So. One may wonder why it's taken so long for Shinra Bansho to finally get an anime. But now at last, we, it is finally getting one. And since it's going to be streaming, at least in Japan on Nico Nico, hopefully it will also stream uh, on June 29th on the American English language version of Nico Nico, or perhaps on Crunchyroll or Hulu, or some other English language favorable website. Isika, the manga by Osamu Takahashi, is also getting an anime. There is some theory, some discussion in the Japanese fan community that this is going to be an OAD episode, but there is no official confirmation yet of what variety or what type of anime this will be. Isika is a manga series that premiered in 2009. It's about a high school boy who works part-time as a housekeeper. Except, while cleaning a house, he accidentally releases monsters. So he discovers that the people who employ him, the people who own the house, are actually a traditional family of monster hunters. So he then has to team up with the uh, daughter of the house, the daughter of his employer, who happens to be a monster hunter, in order to track down and recapture all the monsters that he accidentally let escape. Now, if this sounds something like a gender-swapped version of Cardcaptor Sakura, for example, that's probably true. Um, after all, we know that there's a lot of, can we say, homage, and a lot of creative borrowing, especially in the contemporary Japanese light novel, manga, and anime production industry. So, um, probably not entirely surprising. But, at this point, we don't know exactly what variety of of anime this will be, if it will be a TV series or a single OVA episode, and we don't know exactly when it's coming or who is animating it. But we can expect this to probably show up relatively soon. Kofuku Graffiti is also getting an anime television series. Kofuku Graffiti, or Happy Cooking Graffiti, is an ongoing four-coma or four-panel manga series by Makoto Kawai. This is a cute manga series about a high school girl who is able to make friends via her cooking. Because her hobby is cooking and because she's very good at it, she introduces her cooking and shares her food with various people, thus meeting people and making new friends. So, um, the manga series premiered in 2012, and it's still ongoing, and um, it sounds like this could easily be adapted into a anime TV series. We know as of this week that Selector Infected Weecross will be getting a second TV series. 
We crossed Engig this past week with its 12th broadcast episode, and the 12th episode ended with a title card announcing that a second season will air on Japanese TV this autumn. For those of you that aren't familiar with Wii, with Selector Infected Wii Cross, it is a bishoujo suspense hobby anime. In other words, it's a card battling anime, except the main characters are all girls instead of little elementary school age boys. And there's a degree of suspense in this, as there typically are in the girl oriented ones. Um, Expressed through the idea that the girls that lose X number of fights get essentially kicked out of the battle and lose their magical powers. And also in the visual design of Wii Cross. Even though it's a hobby anime, it actually looks much more similar in visual aesthetic to a darker adult-oriented anime. Something like... Um, Interlude, or Stein's, or sorry, or Chaos Head, yeah, or Boogie Pop Phantom. It has much more of that sort of darker, grim, psychological, visual design aspect to it. Um, I personally wasn't very, very interested in the show, but obviously it has done well enough in Japan that it's getting a second season, and those of you that are interested in it can find it streaming on Crunchyroll. Um, as I was just now discussing this, I do think, I do find that it seems a little bit unusual that typically girls hobby anime like We Cross and um, Fantasista Doll, for example, tend to have a sort of suspense aspect to them, a sort of palpable threat to them, whereas a lot of the times the more conventional, typical boy-oriented card collecting anime. Uh, Battle Spirits, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Duel Masters, um, um, Again, I'm losing names because the name in my mind is Geist Crusher, but that's the current Capcom show. Um, it's Geist something else from a number of years ago. It was a boy's card collecting anime. Typically, they actually don't have that sort of really intense, immediate sense of threat to them that girls' hobby anime do. Um, I'm not actually sure why that is. I actually might give that some thought, so you may hear me discussing that more in the future. But, uh, Selector Infected Wee Cross is not the only current show that's going to be getting another season. We've now got a confirmation that High School DD is also getting another season. High School DD, based on the light novels by Ichi and Ishibumi, got a TV series in 2012 and got another second season in 2013. There's now been a confirmation that it will get a third television series sometime in the future, probably this autumn. There is a possibility that it may start as early as next month, when the new season starts, but I doubt that this will probably be an October premiere. But, for those of you that are not familiar with High School DD, it's a supernatural harem adventure anime. It's available on Crunchyroll. It's also available from distributors and retailers like Animation on DVD Blu-ray combo pack from Funimation. Funimation has secured the license to the supernatural, big breasts, but not harem anime, Bayonetta Bloody Fate. Surprisingly longer than, than I anticipated, uh, Funimation has announced the license to the Bayonetta motion picture. I expected someone to pick up this movie almost immediately, if not when the film was originally light announced, so I'm a little bit surprised that it's taken six months for the film to get licensed. The film is based on the 2013, very, very late, as a December 2013 movie from Gonzo, based on the Platinum Games and Sega um, action shooting game that has an actually a sequel that was just announced last month coming up as well. 
the Bayonetta Bloody Fate movie from Gonzo was directed by and animated by the same crew that animated Gonzo's Street Fighter 4 or, or Super Street Fighter 4 OVA, which was very good. I'm pleased to say that the Bayonetta Bloody Fate movie is actually better. Uh, we typically tend to think of video game adaptation anime being among the lowest dregs of anime quality. However, Bayonetta Bloody Fate is one of the, thankfully, um, and sadly, rare exceptions. The Bayonetta Bloody Fate movie actually has quite a bit in common with the 2000 Vampire Hunter D movie, which many of you will know as Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. It has a very, very similar animation style. It has a very, very similar color design. It's a very, very similar visual design aesthetic. The costume design, the architecture design, the mecha design, a lot of it is very, very reminiscent of uh, the 2000 Vampire Hunter D movie. So if you're a fan of that movie, you'll probably actually enjoy the Bayonetta Bloody Fate movie quite a bit. Uh, the movie does lack a little bit of substantial psychological um, subtextual substance. The character personalities are all pretty two-dimensional, pretty flat. However, the story is engaging. The story is moderately intelligent. The action make, keeps up pace, and thankfully the enemy is not particularly stupid, as typically video game anime tend to be. So the Bayonetta Bloody Fate anime, despite being a video game adaptation, is actually a nice acquisition for Funimation. Now we don't know yet when it will be released in America, but it is one that we can definitely look forward to. Discotech has announced a slew of new licenses. Great for them, great for us as consumers and fans. Discotech has picked up the 2008 Itazara na Kiss anime television series. This was a um, shoujo romance anime based on the modern classic manga by the late Kaoru Tada. It's a uh, 26 episode series that will be released on subtitled DVD next year in a complete set. They've picked up Shin Mazinger Z Impact. This in Japan was the 2009 Shin Mazinger, Shin Mazinger Shogeki Z Han television series by um, Imagawa. This was a reinterpretation, a sort of reboot, um, remake of Goga Guy's 1972 Go, um, Mazinger Z manga and television series. That, this particular series, originally a pay-per-view anime on satellite TV in Japan, so you can expect very good high animation quality, will be released on American DVD in a subtitled collection next year. Discotech has picked up the 2007 Zombie Loan television series. This was a 13-episode series based on the manga by Peach Pit. This is a Bishonen supernatural adventure action drama. This is a show along the lines of anime um, like uh, uh, I can never seem to recall. It must be the day, folks. I can't ever seem to recall these names when I want to. I can picture the Blu-ray cover in my mind. It's from Sentai Filmworks recently released it. Uh, Arcana Familia. Uh, if, you're in the, if you're a fan of something like Arcana Familia, then you'll probably be a fan of Zombie Loan. Zombie Loan was created by Peach Pit, the creators of Rose and Maiden and Deers. However, if you're familiar with Rose and Maiden and familiar with Deers, you'll know that they're very, very drastically different. So you'll know that Zombie Loan as well. It's a very, very different type of story and style from the other Peach Pit productions. But, if you like Peach Pit's storytelling, then you'll probably like Zombie Loan. You can pick that up on September 30th in a subtitled DVD collection. Discotech has licensed Rescue, the Super Dimensional Century Orcus television series. 
This was the 35 episode TV series from 1983. It was originally brought over to America by U.S. renditions who brought only the first 17 episodes on bilingual VHS. Then, in 2007, Imagine Asian brought over the entire 35 episode TV series on limited edition made to order DVD. That DVD set included all 35 episodes plus the existing English language dubs for the first thir for the first 17 episodes. That DVD collection is what Discotech will be re-releasing next year. So next year you'll be able to pick up the entire 35 episode series with optional English dubbing on the first 17 episodes. This is nice to have back in circulation. This is a fan favorite among old school, long time fans. And the Imagination set is very, very rare. Typically rather expensive to acquire when it does very infrequently turn up for sale. Disco Tech is licensed Rescue the 2000 Ayashino Ceres television series, released by Viz on DVD as Ceres Celestial Legend. This was a supernatural, romantic, uh, sort of dark suspense thriller anime uh, by Watase Yu, the creator of Fushigi Yugi. Um, the series was released twice on DVD domestically by Viz. However, all of those DVDs are now long out of print. So this is a show that will be nice to have back in circulation. It will be released next year in a complete bilingual DVD edition. Similarly, Discotech has also picked up the 1997 Reka no Hono, or Flame of Reka television series. This also was previously released in its entirety by the OVA by Viz Media. Uh, Discotech will be releasing the entire bilingual TV series on American DVD next year. There is an existing Flame of Reka OVA. It's actually, strictly speaking, an interactive video game. It's part of, it's actually the lengthy FMV endgame of the video game. That's why the Flame of Reka OVA is so tremendously obscure, rare, and unheard of. Many, many fans don't know that it actually does exist, but in fact it does exist, and it is actually a sequel to the television series. The television series did sort of end. It ended with a very open ending. Not exactly a cliffhanger ending, but very near a cliffhanger ending. But thankfully the video game ending actually provides a little bit more closure than what the TV series did. However, because that video game ending was never actually released on Japanese conventional home video, not on DVD or VHS or Laserdisc, it's not included in any home video release, which is why it was never included in the Viz DVD release, and why presumably it will not be included in Discotech's forthcoming release. But, then again, since Japanese home video fans never got it, you can't really say that you're missing out either, because it was never really intended to be part of the TV series. But, it's a little bit of trivia for you, folks. That's why you listen to people like me, because I forget names, but I tend to remember bizarre trivia like that. So, 4K Media, the multimedia subdivision of Konami, has made two Yu-Gi-Oh! announcements. They've made a announcement that the current Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! television, ARC-5, will be broadcast globally starting sometime next year, either early next year or possibly next summer. The series premiered in Japan this past April and is currently ongoing, so it will, st it will air internationally in select countries next year. 4K Media has also confirmed word that Studio Gallup in Japan is working on a new Yu-Gi-Oh! motion picture. However, that's all the information we know at the moment. Presumably, this would be a new ARC-5 motion picture, but we don't know that for certain. We also don't know yet if this is being created as a Japanese release film or as a film specifically for American release. 
as the first film was. Um, but Yu-Gi-Oh! fans can look forward to a new movie in development. And I'm sure that I'll let you know more about that when, it, when we hear about it. In domestic releases, this past week, Sentai Filmworks released the complete Buso Shinki Armored War Goddess television series in subtitled DVD. Funimation released the complete Red Data Girl collection in a bilingual DVD only edition. And Viz released the Pokemon Black and White Rival Destinies Volume 3 English dubbed DVD collection. Um, my thoughts? Um, I'm a little bit regretful that I didn't finish Musho Shinki. I watched the first episode, then got distracted by other shows, and simply never came back to it. I partially like Musho Shinki. I'm particularly, um, I'm, I particularly gravitate toward the cat girl robot. It's because the cat girl robot was designed by the Japanese character designer Blade. And I happen to love the artwork by Blades. So that's why I really just ignore that cat girl robot. But she doesn't show up until later in the TV series. Um, but those of you that like anime, along the lines of something like um, Angelic, Do Angelic Lair, those of you that like, for example, Angelic Lair, Little Battle Dolls, should probably like Buso Shinki quite a bit. Uh, no Blu-ray edition yet, but perhaps... If it sells well, we will get a Blu-ray edition. So that's some incentive you out there and support the show. Uh, Red Data Girl? Oddly, ironically, I did watch all of Red Data Girl, even though I didn't really like it. I spent the entire 12 or 13 episodes watching Red Data Girl, waiting for it to finally get good, waiting for it to finally really make sense. It doesn't. I can warn you that now, folks. It doesn't. Um, Red Daddy Girl is one of these shows that I, that I do find a bit pretentious. It's a show that seems to have a tremendous amount of potential. It's a show that throws out a lot of suspenseful, a lot of intriguing ideas, a lot of intriguing, interesting characters, very dramatic, very powerful character relationships, but that doesn't actually do anything with anything. The story doesn't really effectively go anywhere. A lot of these powerful characters don't actually do anything. There's never a strong, clear sense of threat or tension. There's an atmosphere of tension because of the music, because of the visual design, um, because of the worry in characters' faces and expressions. But we never exactly know what the threat is. We never exactly know why anyone is fearful. Um, because the story is sadly tremendously underwritten. This is really a case of the problem with Japanese light novels. They are written so quickly that there's not a lot of complexity to the substance. They're written so that they can be pumped out quickly. So the authors don't have a lot of time to think about them, because they're just so concerned with getting them finished. So as a result, Red Daddy Girl has a tremendous amount of potential that just lies there flat. Now the show is very interesting looking. It is relatively unique. You could argue that it's very, very conceptually similar to Code E, but Code E is an action comedy. And Red Daddy Girl is a suspense supernatural drama. So, not exactly the same type of shows. So, if you are curious about Red Daddy Girl, I would give it tentative recommendation. But, be warned that you should rein in some of your expectations. And then Pokemon? Personally, I don't object to Pokemon. I like occasionally watching Pokemon movies. But, as many of you know, I am vehemently opposed to English dubbed anime, so I personally tend to avoid Viz Media's Pokemon DVDs. However, if you're a fan, by all means, we here at Anime Nation would love to supply you with the latest Pokemon DVDs. Tomorrow, in fact, as you regular viewers and listeners will know, 
I'm heading off to Tokyo for two weeks. I do anticipate to somewhat uh, simultaneously blog. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit old-fashioned myself, so I'm still not entirely used to the English word blog. Uh, I'm an English teacher, so the word kind of grates on me a bit. But, <laughs> forgive me, I'm going to try to blog my adventure in Tokyo. So please keep an eye on the Anime Nation news page, the blog, and the Anime Nation forum. And by all means, if you have recommendations on anywhere I should check out, let me know. I'm definitely eager for recommendations, because I will be spending the entire time being otaku. Um, I'm a little bit thrilled, because while I'm there, the actual new TV season should start. So I will get to experience a brand new season of Japanese television anime while I am in Tokyo. Um, actually, I've been so caught up in and preoccupied with the decent, but not stellar, but at least decent, current Japanese television series that I haven't actually paid a huge amount of attention to what's coming up. So I'm actually very, very eager to see the new season shows to see if any of them, or how many of them, pick my interest. You can be sure that next time I record a podcast, I'll let you know some of my detailed impressions of the new season shows. More immediately, I can let you know some impressions on what I've been watching lately, and what I've been watching most lately is nine most recently fan-subbed episodes of Magical Fun Fun Pharmacy the um, old adult male-oriented shoujo anime uh, written by Chiaki J. Konata. The show has a rather cultish, meaning very devoted and also very small, fan following in Japan. And the more I watch the show, the more I see why. The show predates Cardcaptor Sakura, but I can actually see a lot of influence and a lot of similarity between Fun Fun Pharmacy and Cardcaptor Sakura in the show. It's as though the characteristics that fans love so much about Cardcaptor Sakura, the main character's personality, the, the occasional hints of danger, the sense of Japanese culture, the sense of very, very subtlety, teaching moral and cultural lessons that are embedded into the episodes. All of those, all of those aspects that are in Cardcaptor Sakura are actually in Fun Fun Pharmacy as well. So, I'm a little bit disappointed that Fun Fun Pharmacy is not better known in America, and especially not more respected here in America. But I am at least very glad that it is now being semi-regularly fan-translated because that fan-translation means that there are at least some people out there besides me that really appreciate and really respect the show. And it makes me happy to know that it's now available to American English-speaking fans that are interested in making an effort to seek it out. So, Fun Fun Pharmacy is one of those sort of buried treasures that I really appreciate finding every now and again. This one, not quite as buried as some that I've been lucky and fortunate to occasionally find, but it's one that I look forward to watching in batches, periodically, and it's one that I look forward to finally finishing. So, if you happen to be a fan of somewhat more substantial Bishoujo and Magical Girl anime. If you have not yet ch checked out Fun Fun Pharmacy, I encourage you to give it a shot. You may find yourself with a new favorite anime. I'm hoping that I find some favorite new anime when I go out to Tokyo, and I hope that here at Anime Nation we are always able to supply your favorite anime. So I thank you for watching, and I thank you for your patronage and your advice. I'll talk to you from Tokyo next week.